What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. So I said I was going to do a video talking about how and why I financed my new semi-trailer here. Um, give you guys a little idea of how I did it, why I did it. And that way if you're interested in buying a new semi-trailer or a truck, this may help you. I could not find a whole lot of information on it whenever I did it as far as interest rates and uh, length, uh, ter uh, term length and that sort of stuff. And uh, so I figured I'd put a video together. I'm going to take you guys in the house of the whiteboard. Uh, so that I can explain a little better and uh, won't have all this outside noise and traffic and stuff. Alright guys, so you know that I went and bought a brand new 2022 model uh, flatbed semi-trailer. And the reason I did that is my old one was wore out. I needed a different trailer um, that was in better condition. It didn't make sense to keep putting money into my old trailer. Um, I looked at used trailers. Um, there wasn't a whole lot of price difference. In between the used trailer and the new trailer the used trailers I looked at were all around twenty thousand dollars the new trailer was basically thirty thousand um, dollars there was going to be uh, financing on each one of those trailers the financing rate for a new trailer is lower than the financing for a used trailer the used trailers also were going to need tires and brakes that sort of stuff and so when you figure the difference in you're only about five thousand dollars difference and the used trailer and the new trailer so I went with the new trailer um, that way it's got warranty and everything everything's brand new on it, it comes with new tires I don't have to mess with it hook up to it and go um, so that's why I bought the new trailer as far as the financing rate goes um, I put money down on it and I financed it for 60 months uh, your financing rate on commercial stuff is different than say buying a, a new pickup or a new tractor or something like that uh, you know, a lot of times when you buy a new pickup or new tractors, that sort of stuff, you can get 0% or so-called 0%. It's financed in there, but, um, you know, they make it sound real good. But that's not how the commercial stuff works. Um, the commercial stuff is going to be, if you have like a 750 credit score, you make it get down to like 6.5%. Um, I got them down to 8.5% on my particular purchase. And my credit score is around 700 uh, for, for, you know, knowledge, information, whatnot. That's what I came up with. Um, on the used trailer, they were wanting like 13% interest on that. And uh, so that didn't make a lot of sense. Um, now, if you're wondering about paying cash for it, yes, that's also an option. And uh, the interest on the, the particular trailer I got, I'll show you what I paid for my trailer. The prices have changed now. Um, they had like two or three of these trailers on the lot and I know they sold another trailer the same day um, as I bought mine because they were getting it ready as well as mine when I picked mine up and so uh, the new trailers coming in are obviously more money than the one I bought um, because of the price increases that we're having and everything so anyway the trailer that I bought was I'm trying to think thirty thousand it was thirty thousand five hundred dollars um, this included the uh, the dealer uh, document fees and whatnot. Um, it was thirty thousand five hundred dollars. This included included um, the uh, twelve percent FET. That's federal excise tax. Uh, for you guys, that's not uh, familiar with trucking and sort of stuff. It's the same taxes they put on like tires whenever you go buy tires. If you look at your uh, invoice on your tires, you'll see on there where they charge you a 12% uh, federal excise tax uh, on top of your sales tax. So this already includes the 12% in this here. And uh, it does not include sales tax. And I did not pay sales tax on it because I run a portion plates. If you have a portion plates, which if you're not familiar with the portion plates, if you're not in trucking, a portion plates is where you register to run in all 50 states and so you don't pay a sales tax and say I'm based out of Louisiana uh, you know you don't pay a Louisiana sales tax on this because you are uh, based to run out of all 50 states so you save money there um, say if you were only registered in your state whether it be Louisiana Texas wherever uh, you would have to pay whatever your state sales tax um, as well on to this so that lot would be another eight or ten percent whatever your local taxes are um, would be on top of this here but this was my out the door uh, price right here 
um, out the door $30,500 that um, I did not finance this whole amount. I'll get to that in just a second. I had to put uh, some money down. But uh, like I say, that includes that 12% FET, that it does not include the finance charge. Um, and I put down, I traded my other trailer in to start with. They gave me $3,000 trade. The guy wanted to give me, uh, he wanted to give me $2,500. But I had talked to a different dealership. And uh, that guy offered me three thousand, so I wasn't going to take less than three thousand. Um, I could have probably got four thousand, forty-five hundred for my trailer, selling it to a private individual. I did not do that because my experience with trying to sell stuff to people like that is you got to meet with four, five, ten people, depending on you know some of them serious, and you know you probably wind up missing a load or a couple loads or something, and trying to meet people or trying to meet them on the weekend. And, and messing up your other plans and to me it wasn't worth the extra stuff or I had to take off and not carry a load in order to you know go have a notary sign it over and all that sort of stuff it wasn't worth the hassle for the extra thousand bucks is what I determined so I took three thousand dollars trade in now the financing as I say they give me eight point five percent for sixty months that's that's what uh, I got on the financing. Now they told me I had to put 10% down in order to qualify because I have never bought anything on commercial credit and they asked me about that. When I bought my first truck, I bought it in cash. When I bought my second truck, I bought it in cash. And the reason for that is I uh, don't mind borrowing money whenever it is something that is easy to be financed. A new trailer or new truck or something new is always pretty easy to be financed uh, when you're buying it from a dealer. They have everything set up with lenders that it's easy to get uh, financed and it doesn't take much time. Whenever you buy like a truck from a private individual, it is hard to get financing and you risk that individual selling it to something else while you're messing around with the bank for a week and a half or two weeks uh, trying to get the money. Unless you have a bank or credit union that you work with closely that you can go up there and say, hey, I'm trying to buy this truck from this private individual today. I need some money today and then we'll work out the paperwork later. Um, that's what you're going to run into. And uh, so I bought both of my big trucks in cash. I bought my last trailer cash. So I had no commercial financing established. Everything was going off my personal credit. And uh, so they wanted to put me, wanted me to put down 10% uh, on this. $30,000 that way, you know, it kind of covered some of their uh, cost and whatnot. If I default on it, you know, they're not out quite as much. So anyway, I had already uh, planned to put down money on the trailer. So they took my trade in that qualified me for the 10%. Uh, uh, you know, that qualified me for the loan right there, uh, the trade in, but I wanted to put additional money down on it because I had $4,000 saved to put tires on my other trailer because actually, you know, if you've seen the video, I was going to put tires on my other trailer, put money into it, and that trailer was going to need about $4,000 worth of work uh, before the end of the year. So I had $4,000 setting aside and I was fixing to put that money into my trailer. Um, so I went ahead and decided I would put the $4,000 down on this along with this. So I put down. put four thousand dollars down in cash so my total down payment for this trailer was seven thousand dollars so that left me owing there's some odd numbers here I'm just rounding but that left me owing twenty three thousand five hundred dollars roughly on this brand new trailer and if you've looked at trailer prices you know that these trailers are hold this value somewhere in here between twenty to twenty two five somewhere in there for a good five to seven years usually if you don't damage them in any way so uh, that's kind of what I was looking at from day one by putting that money down if I have to sell this trailer you know I'm not going to be upside down in it uh, in any kind of way and uh, so that was important to me because you never know with trucking uh, how things gonna go and obviously that also lowered my payment my monthly payments 
um, looks better. It looks better. It, it actually qualified me for a little bit better uh, interest rate here, I think, on one because I think they were at like 9.5% or something on 10% down. I told them I was going to put down more, and I think they lowered it. Um, we kind of went back and forth on a couple of deals, and this has been a couple of months ago now that I'm making this video. But uh, anyway, that's kind of what I come up with right there. And my monthly payment, is about $485 is what we're looking at. Um, as I say, I looked at used trailers and stuff and time I bought it and, and fixed it up and put it on the monthly payment is going to be about the same. Um, it, it just wasn't much difference to, to worry about if you figure, you know, $5,000 over five years. Um, so you're asking yourself, would you save money financing this? I mean, paying cash instead of financing it? And here's uh, my thoughts on it. Eight and a half percent interest sounds pretty expensive, and it kind of is uh, for a new product, but you have to understand this is commercial. But being commercial or used for business, you can use this as a tax write off. And I'm not a CPA by any means, but uh, from my understanding, is that you can write off not only the purchase of the trailer, but the interest on the loan. And so roughly the interest on 23.5 at 8.5% is roughly $5,500. So it's costing me $5,500 to borrow this amount of money for five years. And the tax advantage to doing this is instead of me paying, well, it's actually not costing me $5,500 net because it's saving me approximately $2,000 on taxes. So by spending 55 here, it's saving me 2,000 with the IRS, if that makes sense. So net, it's costing me $3,500 to borrow this much money over five years. So if you figure that up, what's that six or $700 a year for five years? that it's realistically costing me to borrow this amount of money. Um, and this is what I think is a good, a good loan situation. Um, you know, it's easy to borrow money like that because the, it's easy for them to secure their investment on the trailer because it's a brand new trailer. They hold the title to it. If you don't pay them, they come get your trailer. Um, so, the financing is, is really simple and easy to do with this. Um, now, let's just say that you had the money to buy a trailer cash. Let's just say you had 30 or 40 grand and you were going to buy a trailer in cash. Okay, well, you eliminate your $3,500 here. You're, so you're saving money by paying cash. But now let's say that your engine blows up in your truck, you know, two or three months down the road. You haven't had time to save your money back up, get your money back right. Now you need $30,000 to cover an engine rebuild in your truck. How are you going to finance a $30,000 engine rebuild? They don't have anything to secure that with unless your truck is worth more than that. Let's say you've got a $20,000 truck. You need a $30,000 motor job in your $20,000 truck. The bank's going to go, yeah, we're not, you know, we're not loaning on that, especially if you owe money on the truck. You know, because then they can't take the title to the truck. So it's very hard to borrow money on something like that. So you need to have a little bit of money on hand to operate your business. And it doesn't make sense to take all your money uh, and put it towards this when this is something that's easily financed versus something else. Um, so you broke down on the side of the road, you blow out two or three tires, you run over something, tear up something, you need four or five thousand dollars. If you spend all your money that you operate with, to buy a trailer and then you leave yourself no operating capital, um, you're going to get in a bad situation in a hurry. So that's to me why I chose to do this. This is easily financed versus if you're sitting inside the road, you know, it's going to be hard to get your hands on money because they don't finance any repairs, any of that sort of stuff. Or if you need to buy something else, uh, a used piece of equipment from somebody else for your business, um, that's going to be hard to get financed. So to me, if you can do it for if you can borrow money for like a thousand dollars a year or something on this kind of money or less you know that's not that much money uh, as far as interest goes for what you're getting 
and you know you're able to hold all hold on to some of your cash and not tie up your money uh, unless you just have a whole bunch of money now if you just got book of money then, then this won't matter to you but you probably won't be driving a truck anyway won't be watching this video so uh anyway that kind of sums up uh, my thoughts on it if it's easy to borrow the money borrow the money if it's something else like private individual purchase you know go to the uh go to the bank get some cash out and buy it from the individual because you'll lose you'll lose your uh your buying with the with the seller the seller will sell it to whoever has got the cash or whoever come with the money it's not going to hold a vehicle or whatever you're buying a truck trailer from a private individual he's not going to hold it for you for two weeks while the bank approves the loan and all that stuff whereas uh you go to a dealership and you buy a new trailer they can get you approved right then and there usually if not then the next day you'll know for sure and uh so it's easily done it didn't cost a lot of money as i say thirty five hundred dollars over five years and uh, i put down cash so i'm not upside down in it i think that's important to do uh that way if something happens uh trucking is very unpredictable if something happens in a month or two down the road you need to get out from under it uh you know you probably already made a payment or two on that um so that's got you in the right ballpark to be in and i was told when i bought this trailer it was going up about 10 percent so they're probably 32.5 33.5 somewhere in there $33,000 price range now um so i'm ten thousand dollars under what a brand new one would cost so and that's that's really where you want to be at if you need to get out from under it as you know somebody's got cash money and wants to buy a trailer don't want to finance has bad credit just getting into the business can't finance it for whatever reason um you know they can save ten thousand dollars buying a trailer from you that's slightly used and uh you know you really don't lose you lose the first initial down payment or whatever but you've probably already made that back and uh you know hauling some loads and whatnot so it, it just gets you pushing a position to get out from under it if things go bad and that's where you want to be so uh anyway that's the video i promise you guys i hope this helps clears up anybody's thinking about buying a semi trailer um a truck purchase i'm sure it's similar they actually told me um if i wanted to buy a truck from them give me about give about 12 14 months of making my payments consistently and if i wanted to buy anything else uh it'd probably be really easy to get approved um, now that i have some commercial credit started that's also another reason to do this is if i decide to do another business or something else um, it makes it easier to uh, borrow money and other aspects because i've got some commercial credit established as well and that's another thing the banks look at as far as business uh, operating cost and and whatnot and uh they also go off of how long you've been in business as well so uh that's what they look at on all that sort of stuff so anyway hope this video was helpful thanks for watching we'll see you guys in the next video